Okay. Hey everybody. So tonight is a new game um, on my gaming kick here. I swear there's going to be comics soon. There's sort of comics with this one. Um, it's by the same people that did uh, Mushroom Eaters and um, Cave Evil and a couple of other games. I recently got this from Board Game Geek website. Um, somebody had kind of an auction on there for it and uh, I won it. Um, so score for me. Uh, a little bit cheaper than if I would have bought it right from the site. I felt a little weird about that at first, but ultimately, you know, it was a bit of a discount. Uh, the guy packed it up really well. Um, so we're going to look at Psycho Raiders. And as it says right there, they hunt, you die. It's basically like a, a slasher movie um, type uh, counter hex war game type of deal. Um, so they put out this magazine last year at Halloween and it sort of it has some ads in it. It's issue number one. There's already talk of this Halloween there's going to be another issue. Maybe a different game. Maybe some upgrades to this game already. We'll see. Don't really know what's in it. Um, and it's mostly just the rule book but uh, it starts out with a little kind of comic strip that kind of sets the stage for you as far as all the villains. And it takes place, did I say this already, 1979 apparently. Uh, oh no, sorry, October 31st, 1978. Uh, these, these group of psychopaths find some teens whose truck is broken down and uh, the carnage begins and it sets the tone for the whole the whole thing there and there you can see all the the evil characters in the town that they're chasing him into called Crucible Psycho Raiders and then a list of our three hapless victims Don, Ginger and Randy and then we get into the instructions a little bit of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe there with that the burned remains of Stephen Blanchard near Road 21 his three friends were never found uh, so there you go and then we go through the rules and the rules and the rules and then some little cartoon strip again uh, with some fake ads and real ads uh, for a Cave Evil expansion and supplements magazine which is a very cool thing. Um, we even get a little bit of a Psycho Raiders pinup. Uh, Happy Halloween <laughs> pinup and then more rules and rules with a bunch of art thrown in for good measure. Um, and then the character sheets which I have photocopied. Um, my printer is kind of not doing the greatest but uh, at least I got a chance to use these because this is how you're going to keep track of your players both good and evil. Um, and then the various townsfolk that uh, appear throughout the game and the vehicles and then a little bonus fiction at the back and more comics and more art and more ads and even more comics and ads on this page too and uh, finally a pinup. So there you go, there's a good look at that magazine. So basically, like I said, the premise of the game is you're being chased by these people. Um, they're represented by the van token here and we're in the red truck token and you work your way through, sorry for the glare there, you work your way through the map and the whole point is you have to get off the north end of the map there. You have to have as many or all of your characters escape off the north end and if you do then you win the game um, but you have all this area to cover that the psychopaths can uh, try to kill you. Um, during the game there's townsfolk uh, represented by the tokens here. There's a mechanic in the gas station. There's uh, some dude hanging out the old hanging out by the old store, the sheriff in the sheriff station, the crypt keeper in the graveyard, and then just a farmer in his farmhouse. Uh, there's other vehicles along the way that you can try to get into and drive away or use as weapons to try to drive into them. 
Um, the thing with the townsfolk is it's it's a it's a random role that's been done by the Psycho Raiders. Basically, one person plays the Psycho Raiders. The other person in the game plays all of the uh, all of our heroes, quote unquote. Um, so basically, you can play like a four-player game. Each person can be in control of one of the characters. Um, I'm going to try it solo just because I want to kind of get a feel for the game before we play it. So whoever's controlling the Psycho Raiders does a random roll to see out of the one, two, three, four, five characters, the first roll of the dice is how many of those characters you're going to roll for. So if you get a one, two, three, or four, or five, that'll depend on how many you're going to choose yourself. You don't tell the opposing player. And then you roll the dice, and based on that number, it's going to tell you if they're good guys or if they're bad guys. Um, if they do become somebody that's on your team as the Psycho Raiders, you keep it all a secret and at any time during the game you can reveal the fact that they're actually not good guys. Um, our kind of good guys are under the assumption that they're all good guys and they're to help them out. Uh, sometimes that's going to be true, sometimes it's not. It's a random thing. And like I said, they can reveal that at any point. So. They can get really friendly with some of the townsfolk and the townsfolk can follow them around. Uh, you don't have to reveal it right away. You can reveal it when you're right on the outskirts of town. You think that you've gotten away, then this town folk that's with you can all of a sudden turn on you and try to kill you. Um, so that's kind of a neat twist to it. Um, so like I said, all that is decided before the game starts and it's random. Uh, then the next step is there's events that happen. I believe it's at the beginning of every turn. Uh, I'd have to check that out, but there's just random events which we'll look at later on um, that are going to just throw in another bit of excitement into the mix before we start playing. Um, he, Nate on the board game site fully admits, and even in the magazine, fully admits that the map got printed a little darker than he had anticipated. Um, so it's a little bit harder to determine which terrain is which. But uh, this is a dock, so this terrain is water. Um, and these are trees here, I believe. Trees here as well, trees there. Uh, the road comes up through here. Um, yeah, and then like I said, graveyard is up there. The campers, or the good guys, have the ability to hide as well, which when you get into some of this terrain, you can choose to hide. And basically that brings a, let's have a look here. You have, each player has three different tokens and they're all marked, so one, uh, two, and three. Um, one and three have nothing on the back, or two and three have nothing on the back. One has a big giant X. Um, when you choose to hide, everybody's playing with the number one. When you choose to hide, you can choose another one of your tokens and double them up. So one can go one way and one can go the other way, I believe is how it works. So then whichever one the Psycho Raiders attack, it'll be revealed that, okay, well, this one was my fake, this one was really me. Um, I believe that's how that works. Throughout the game, you'll pick up cards. You can see them along the side here. When you explore the different buildings, uh, you'll be able to locate weapons. Uh, we, as the campers, start out with one weapon, the tire iron, and it is a two strength. Uh, when you see this icon with the two cubes in it, that means that in order to use this, you have to be on the same hex as one of the Psycho Raiders. If you're attacking, if you're here and they're here, it's just based on your own individual strength. If you're both sharing the hex, you can add your individual strength, uh, the number two, to it as well. So it gives you a tiny bit of an upper hand. Now, the Psycho Raiders themselves um, have a couple of different weapons each. I think it's, yeah, it looks like two each. So for example, this character whose name I, I don't know off the top of my head has a shield that gives him an advantage of three if they're sharing this hex and a battle mace which gives him an advantage of four. Again, if they're in the same hex, he can use that. Um, and underneath it says add strength. There's some weapons where you cannot 
add it to your own character strength. You just use the strength of value on that particular weapon. Uh, you'll see a pile here called Kill. If one of your characters reaches the end of their lives, um, you randomly draw the top card. And for example, this one is called, whoop, upside down is what it's called, um, unidentifiable. If it matches the way that you were just attacked, for example, if I was attacked by a flamethrower and I looked at this one, um, I would get another chance to live, basically. The card has to match how you were being attacked. So if I was being attacked with, say, that mace from uh, the character we just saw, this one would be a match, and then I would die. Um, I'm not sure what the symbols on the sides are. I'll have to read about that. I, I just kind of read through the game once. Uh, kind of skimmed through it and did a little bit of a setup and just soaked in all the gory cards because there's plenty of them. Gut Massacre, uh, Brain Bash, Neck Gush. It's, it's great stuff. It's, uh, as people love to say, uh, it's heavy in theme. This game, I'll shuffle those up again later. Uh, so I believe that's the case with those. There is another character here on the side. Um, I didn't read about him yet, but he's got a Camaro, and he's, he comes in at, there's one special moment that could occur where you'd get to, to add this character to the board. Um, and then there's doubles of tokens for uh, the characters who we already have on the map, which I've shown you before already. Um... Every character, there's a special, a once per game camper special ability, and there's a once per game raider special ability. Uh, they can only be used, like it says, once per game, but only, excuse me, only by one camper. So if one of the characters decides to use the plus five adrenaline, as their special ability. That ability is not available for the rest of the game to the other characters. You have to go to one of the other three. So there's four total for each. And that goes for the same, yes, it goes for the same for the Raiders' abilities too. Uh, only one can use it. So since there's four Raiders, they're only each gonna be able to use one. And it's gonna be have to be different from everybody else. You can use them at any time during the game. Um, that's that. There's also, weather that comes into play here too. Uh, it says to start the game off clear and then through events that'll change throughout the game. Um, there's rain which is just gonna change the terrain. I assume especially for driving it's gonna make things slick. Um, there's fog which really adds a, a neat element to things depending on the thickness of the fog Oh no, sorry, not depending on the thickness of the fog. If there's fog in play, whenever you're moving at full speed in fog, um, you then have to roll one dice and whatever number, it, it sends you off in that direction randomly to kind, of, uh, um, to kind of mimic what it would be like finding your way around in fog. Um, the movement is something I should say. There's three types of movement that you can take. You can, where's the characters, where did it say that? Uh, let me find a sheet, sorry, here. Let me have a look. Do, 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 do. There we go, there's a sheet for them, and there's a sheet for them. So, oh, maybe it's not, I thought it was, uh, that's my mistake, so I guess that's just for the vehicles. Okay, so just for the vehicles, there's three different speeds. Uh, you can see, for example, their pickup truck, a nine, a four, and a three. Top speed would be nine hexes with the pickup truck. Um, a slower speed of four or three are your next choices. When you go at a top speed, especially on the roads here, when you cross, when you come across these items, these these hexes rather, if you're traveling at top speed, this is supposed to represent a treacherous turn. And when 
you hit one of those at top speed. You stop at the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I stop at the first treacherous turn. There is a dangerous turn um, chart here that I roll a dice. Uh, and if I roll a one or two, nothing happens. If I roll a three, four, or a five, I go off road one hex in any direction that I want. Um, if I roll a six, I go off road and then I flip where everyone in the vehicle must roll on the damage table. So basically it's to represent that the truck has flipped um, as it's gone off road skidding around a corner and I have to see how much damage each person has taken and here is the damage table right here. When you, when a character gets damage, uh, you can see here for example, maybe you can see, Don has a speed of six, a strength of three, and a will to live of four. If I say, let's say I take two points of damage, I can choose to take two points off of speed, two points off of strength, or one point off of each. Um, will to live, we'll talk about it in a minute. So that's, so of course when your strength gets down to zero is when you're dead. Um, obviously when your speed, the lower your speed gets the harder it's going to be for you to get away from any of the psycho raiders. Um, so that's how you determine that, which is why I've made photocopies because you can mark it down on these sheets. I guess you could also make some sheets yourself, but it's I think it's cooler having the actual drawings. Uh, now Will to Live is a special item that um, basically allows you to re-roll, it allows you to redo things uh, and every time you use one you cross it off so if your character has four will to live it's basically like you're getting four chances to re-roll an attack or a defense um, or a damage I believe um, to see if you can do better with your second roll and of course once your will goes to zero then you're just stuck with whatever uh, you ended up with um, the last, after that little sidetrack, the last weather condition here is wind and I haven't read about that so I don't know how that changes things for you as far as uh, play of the game. But like I said, you start off at uh, clear. Some of the other charts that are on here are um, hot wiring a vehicle, uh, searching for weapons when you go into a room or into a, a building rather. Um, you can do a roll to see if you found a weapon. So a four and five, you find one weapon. If you roll a six, you find two weapons, which you draw randomly from the decks that are beside you there. Uh, locked doors or windows. On the side, you'll see a doorway there that's unlocked. You'll see a window here with an X beside it. That means that they're locked. And that's when you have to do that special roll to see if you can enter through there. So as you're panicking and running away from the Psycho Raiders, you have to do a quick roll to see if you can enter the building. Um, another, what was I going to say about that? Oh yeah, the, the terrain also designates um, a different amount of, if you're just going through regular hexes, uh, each hex is just one movement. I believe if you're trying to go through water, each hex is two. It costs you two movement points. I believe through the forest too, it's just one movement point. I'd have to double check that. But the terrain is going to differ how many movement points you use. Um, another really cool thing about the game that, that adds to the theme is uh, there's a scream table. So depending on your distance, let's get one of our characters here. Depending on your distance from, uh, let's say we're over here, this guy's outside there. So we're one, two, three, four, five hexes away from that particular character. Um, at the top here, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. There's a hex range, one to five, six to 10, or 11 to 15. You'd roll a dice to see if that person could hear you if you scream. So because I'm one to five away, if I rolled a one, he wouldn't hear me. Anything else, he would hear me. And then that would mean any character would be alerted. And then they enter the game on the next 
uh, turn sequence. So basically that's how you get these people on your side to kind of notice that you're in need uh, of some assistance. So then the next turn, now they actually participate in the game and can work with you, uh, have weapons, get, get weapons of their own. Um, you can send them off to attack the raiders, I guess, if you want. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but again, uh, their, whether their friends or foes are kept secret until the Psycho Raiders want to spring it on you. If they are enemies, they can spring it at any time. Um, and then there's a table here for rolling a natural one, and I'm not 100% sure what that means. I guess, I don't know, I don't want to say anything about that because I'm not sure. Um, here's some of the weather conditions, so if it's clear, there's no effect. If there's rain, um, yeah, you minus one to dangerous turns, one to defense strength against grab. Wind gives you one strength to fire weapons. Fog, uh, you may hide in any adjacent hex space, so you can hide more easily when there's heavy fog from the Psycho Raiders as well. Um, what else to talk to you about? They give you a little bit of a sequence of play. There's different actions. On each camper's turn, you can move and perform one action. You can perform an action at any time during your move. So if you have, say, uh, the ability to move six hexes, you can move three. Let's say you're coming from here and you go one, two, three into the house. You can stop there at three and do a search to see if there's any weapons. If there's a weapon, pick it up and go one, two, three to complete your turn if you'd like. Um, so you can do it at the, in the middle of your turn. Um, opening locked doors, using telephones, gaining composure is a really good one. You can stop and just try to regain your composure, which I think helps you with, um, in the bathrooms you can do that as well too. I think a bathroom, you can kind of hide and lock yourself in the bathroom and kind of regain your composure. I can't remember if that regenerates one of your will to live points that you might have lost. I'm not sure about that, but, uh, so that's a pretty good overview, I'd say. Um, hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, like I said, really, really heavy in theme. It's, it's very cool, all the little kind of bonuses and things that can happen to you during the game and things that you can do. Like I, I love the, the scream action, for example. I think that's a fantastic action. Um, oh yeah, here it is right here in the map key. The, po the pluses are gain composure. And then here's the hex movements. So long grass, it costs you one. Road costs you one. Treed area costs you two. Um, lake costs you three. Graveyard costs you one as well. So there you go, there's the street lights. Exposes hide token on hex and adjacent hexes. Okay, gas pump. Dangerous turn, locked doors, telephone, yeah. Um, there's also things that you can get, uh, walkie-talkies as well, uh, again, which I haven't read about. And I think the f action, when the Psycho Raiders reveal that one of the town's folk is on their side, I think there's this special action called Call the Boys, and I, I believe that is just kind of alerting the Psycho Raiders to their whereabouts. I, I think, which then gives them a turn immediately, but I'm not sure about that. I haven't fully read that part of it yet either. Um, so that's the game. I was reading some kind of uh, war game reports, I guess, on uh, the board game site, and the common thing that happens is games last about, you know, especially the first few times people play them, they say, oh my god, my first game lasted 10 minutes, everybody got killed. Um, they say in the book that uh, it's unbalanced on purpose. The Psycho Raiders really do have the upper hand at the beginning of the game. Uh, and, and, and if you can manage to get anywhere in your truck, most people wipe out up here somewhere. They, they've 
apparently rarely get past here to, for their truck to be any use. Um, if you can actually run and get into anywhere, then you kind of have a fighting chance to discover some weapons that are going to help you. Because there's some ranged weapons, like there's shotguns and rifles and things where there's one weapon, I believe it was the rifle, where it's uh, three, three hexes from you, gives you an, an eight added to your strength. Um, everything else is a little less. Um, so then you actually have a bit more of a fighting chance to get away, but a lot of the reports that I read were people just getting slaughtered right near the beginning of the game. Um, but again, there's, there's hope that after a few times and kind of getting the hang of it and some of the rules, especially the hiding rule is something that people seem to be very confused about. There was quite a few questions about the hiding rule. I think once you can get those sorted, you might stand a bit more of a chance, but uh, it's it's great. Uh, just another hit as far as these guys are concerned in my books. Uh, fantastic job. The artwork is just amazing. And uh, I can't wait to play it, which I'm going to do now. So uh, maybe I'll be back with some videos. If not, I, I highly recommend hunting down a copy. I think he still has some available on his site. I will leave links in the description box as usual, and if you're interested, please visit him and support him so he can keep making more games. Um, yeah, one last note, a little local beer called Farmery, which is pretty damn delicious that I will be enjoying while I play Psycho Raiders.